Hello everyone and welcome to the session on current affairs wherein we are going to cover the important news of the third week of May 2022. Uh, the week began with Prime Minister concluding his visit to Nepal and last Monday on May 16th, India and Nepal signed six memorandums of understanding in culture and education sectors. During the tour, Prime Minister likened the ties between the two neighbors as unshakable as the Himalayas while he was on his visit to Lumbini, the birthplace of Gautam Buddha. Prime Minister Modi and his Nepalese counterpart, Sher Bahadur Deva, also led the foundation stone for the India International Center for Buddhist Culture and Heritage in Lumbini. A lot of other countries already have their Buddhist culture centers in Lumbini. Prime Minister Modi also held bilateral talks with Deva and uh, in Lumbini, during which they discussed various ways to strengthen the ongoing cooperation and to develop new areas in the multifaceted bilateral partnership. It was Prime Minister Modi's fifth visit to the Himalayan nation since 2014. It's worthwhile to note that in 2020, the ties between India and Nepal were strained after KP Oli led government had unveiled a new political map in which Kathmandu claimed the disputed areas in Kalapani area, which falls under the tri junction between India, China, and Nepal as its own. The normalcy returned to the bilateral ties between the two nations after current Prime Minister of Nepal, Sher Bahadur Deva, visited India last month, during which the two sides agreed to resolve the issue. Moving on, uh, on the economic front, a uh, good news, India creates 88 lakh jobs in the month of April. According to Center for Monitoring Indian Eco uh, Economy report, India created 88 lakh jobs in April in one of the biggest expansions in the labor market post-COVID pandemic. India's working labor force swelled to 43.72 crore. The maximum expansion of 8 million was seen in December 2021. The CMI report, however, also said that the jobs, number of jobs created was inadequate to meet the demand, which means that the month also saw an increase in the number of unemployed people, pushing the unemployment rate slightly higher than what it was in the month of March. India's labor force, uh, labor force also shrunk by 12 lakh the preceding three months. The surge in employment actually is well for the generation, general population as it means more wage earners per household at a time when inflation has touched an eight-year high. The action continues in the holy city of Varanasi. The Varanasi court mandated survey team reported on 16th May that it had found a shibling in the pond area of the Gyanwapi mosque where Muslims do wazu the cleaning before offering namaz. The court had ordered the district administration to seal the area for now. The three-day survey with video recording inside the mosque concluded on May 16th. The survey, survey team filmed all the three domes, basements, the main area where namaz is offered and the pond. Supreme Court also directed the Varanasi District Administration on May 17 to secure the shibling, which was reportedly found in the premises. It also allowed the Muslims to offer namaz in the Gyanwapi Mosque. On the same day, in an action-packed drama, the Varanasi Court removed the Advocate Commissioner Ajay Mishra, who supervised this survey of the Gyanwapi Mosque from his position over leaking of the contents of the survey report. Later in the week, the Supreme Court also directed the district judge to decide on a priority basis the suit by the Committee of Management, uh, Anjuma Intezamia Masjid, which manages the Gwanwapi Mosque in Varanasi, that the case was not maintainable because of the bar on such cases under the Protection of Places of Worship Act 1991. This Matter relates to a petition filed by five women seeking permission to daily worship and perform rituals at the Shringar Gauri behind the western wall of the mosque, which is adjacent to the famous Kashi Vishwanath temple. 
The site as of now opens for Hindu devotees on, on just one day of the year. On the <clears throat> inflation side, the wheat prices are on a record high. With Russia and Ukraine at war since February 2024, uh, February 24, there is a global wheat shortage. Both Russia and Ukraine are the breadbasket for Europe. The wheat prices surged on May 16 to a record high of $453 a ton in the European markets. This came after India decided to ban the export of wheats amid reports of shortfall in production estimated to be around 3% due to strong heat waves, particularly in the northern part of the country. Russia and Ukraine together supply around one third of the global wheat sale. The G7 group of nations last week sought to blame India for what is developing into a prolonged wheat crisis. Amid the rising inflation, the, go the central government on 13th May decided to ban unapproved wheat exports. This is in a sharp contrast to India's stand in April during the Modi-Biden meet and at the United Nations, where India wanted the World Trade Organization to allow wheat export. In our neighboring country, Sri Lanka, the economic crisis continues. Sri Lanka has run out of petrol and is unable to find dollars to finance essential imports. The new Prime Minister, Ranil Vikram Singhe, warned that the bankrupt country could face more hardship in the coming months. The newly elected Prime Minister, Ranil Vikram Singhe, said that the government has no cash to pay salaries for 1.4 million civil servants in the month of May and the printing money will be the last resort for him. He also warned that the fuel and electricity tariffs will be raised substantially and his government will also sell off its loss-making national carrier to reduce further losses. Uh, on the aid front, two shipments of petrol and two of diesel using an Indian credit line could provide some relief for the next few days to the island nation. The wholesale inflation is at a 17-year high. Due to the Russia-Ukraine war and the rupees dip against the dollar, India's wholesale inflation touched a 17-year high of 15.08% in the month of April 2022. This marks the 13th consecutive month of double-digit inflation on the wholesale price index. The previous high on WPI in the current series with a base of 2011-2012 was recorded at 14.9% in November 2021. In April 2021, if we compare the data, the wholesale price inflation rate stood at 10.74%. The fuel and power inflation tossed 38.66% up from 34.5% recorded in the month of March. And in this segment, LPG inflation was at 38.4%, petrol at 60.6%, and diesel at 66.1%. Inflation for the manufactured products was at 10.85%, marginally up from the earlier 10.7%. The food inflation also rose slightly from 8.7% to 8.9%. This spike in WPI, the wholesale inflation, has followed a surge in retail inflation that stood at 7.79% in April, reaching an eight-year high. Uh, weather continues to place havoc in the northeastern part of the country. Floods and landslides triggered by heavy rains in India's northeast region claimed at least 11 lives and has already affected 2 lakh people. Surface links to Assam, Assam's Barak Valley and Dima Hassau district and to neighboring states of Tripura, Mizoram and Manipur remain snapped on May 17 as roads and railway tracks were washed away. Two lakh people in the 20 districts of Assam have been affected by the floods. According to Pentagon intelligence officials, in the face of two military, two front military threat from China and Pakistan, India intends to deploy the Russian-made S-400 missile defense system by the next month. The S-400 is, is considered one of the most potent long-range air defense systems in the world with the capability of detecting and destroying missiles, missiles and aircraft. According to Lieutenant General Scott Barrier, Director of Defense Intelligence Agency, India is pursuing an extensive military modernization effort encompassing air, ground, naval and strategic nuclear forces. The Pentagon also noted that India's long-standing defense relationship with Russia remains strong.
Meanwhile, on May 18th, India successfully test fired its first homemade air launch anti ship missile from a Navy helicopter. The Uttar Pradesh government stops grants to new madrasas. On May 18th, the UP government approved a proposal for stopping state grants to new madrasas in the state of Uttar Pradesh in a reversion of policy adopted by the Akhilesh Yadav government during 2012-17. UP has 16,461 madrasas. Of these, 558 madrasas have been getting state grants for a long time, of which, uh, for which Rs. 479 crore was allocated in the 2021-22 budget. In the year 2013, the then Akhilesh Yadav government moved to add 146 more madrasas in the list of grant recipients, but only 100 could be added to the list. The U UP government, uh, under the leadership of Yogi Adityanath, has not added a new madrasa to this list since coming to power in 2017. A week ago, the UP government also uh, <clears throat> uh, made signing the uh, singing the national anthem in all the madrasas mandatory for all students and teachers before commencing the classes every day. In a reversal of his decision, the Supreme Court on May 18th allowed implementation of the other backward classes quota in the Madhya Pradesh local body polls. The Honorable Supreme Court modified its May 10 ruling to allow OBC quota in the polls accepting the backward classes commission's revised report on for the election. Earlier, the Supreme Court had nullified the Maharashtra government's decision to implement a 27% quota for the OBCs in the poll. Now, this decision well, could set a precedence even for the uh, state of Maharashtra and others. Madhya Pradesh OBC quota bid was cancelled for the same reason by the court, for the reason which applied for the Maharashtra government. The new case by MP now sets a phrase precedent for the OBC quota in the polls. In March 2021, the Supreme Court set a three-layer test for states to qualify for implementing the OBC quota in the local body polls. They also needed to set up commission for collecting empirical data for population composition, specify the quota plan based on the commission's report, and the overall quota must not exceed 50% ceiling. The Madhya Pradesh Commission put the OBC population at 48%, recommending a quota limit of 35% for the category. In a surprise move, in the, over the weekend, the Prime Minister, uh, the Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman announced a sharp cut in central exercise duty on fuel prices amid surging inflation. The central excise duty on petrol has been cut by rupees 8 per litre, and the same on diesel has been cut by rupees 6 per litre. The, according, accordingly, the prices of petrol will come down by Rs 9.5, while the diesel will be cheaper by Rs 7. On this, the government says that it will lose nearly 1 lakh crore rupees by taking the cut on the central excise duties. The government also gave Rs 200 rupees per cylinder subsidy to Ujula Yojana beneficiaries for 12 cylinders in a year to help ease some of their burdens arising from cooking gas rates rising to record levels. The, Prime Minister, uh, the finance minister said the gas cylinder subsidy will have a revenue implication of around rupees 6,100 crores. Don't miss out to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon. And also do not forget to subscribe to our other social media handles to receive quick and regular updates and videos.